Greetings, everybody. Thank you for tapping into Do Africa, the Diaspora on Africa. Diaspora on Africa. We are here to have an incredible discussion with you guys. I mean, today we wanted to talk about, you know, one, you know, we're African American living in West Africa, Liberia to be specific. Exactly. And we wanted to talk about, um, because we, we saw a lot of comments on the first part of why we chose Liberia. And thank you again for the comments. Yeah, definitely. We, we want the feedback, right? Because if we think that it's important, you know, uh, with these emerging markets, right? As uh, one, just as Africans all over the world. Absolutely. And entrepreneurs, uh, you know, so we want to be able to, you know, continue to keep this conversation going so that the mindset of our brothers and sisters will be also looking to the continent as an opportunity, right? Yeah, definitely. And then like, subscribe, definitely. tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. Today, we wanted to talk about why black Americans do, don't think they're at That's an incredible, that's an incredible, incredible mindset. So why do you not think African, black Africans or black people in America don't think they're African? Uh, well, I, me, I think a lot of it comes down to media. They don't call it programming for nothing, right? So, television program, exactly, or radio program. Program. So, Got it. from a child, everything that first of all, we don't even see a lot about Africa. We see, huh. we absolutely, we see really nothing in America. Yeah, I'm right. trying to, I'm trying to think outside of coming to America. That's all. We, I don't really, I can't really think of too many other pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, talking about because everything else we would see, we'll see um, the lady. What was she from Facts of Life? For about 70 cents, you can buy a can of soda, regular or diet. In Ethiopia, for just 70 cents a day, you can feed a child like Jamal nourishing meals. So many children around the world still need your help. These children are facing death right now. But with your support and just 50 cents a day, I don't know if y'all remember, and I'll get the name of the, um, the Caucasian lady that used to always talk about a cup, your 50 cent that buys a cup of coffee can help a child in Africa, right, and they right, will right. always show us, you know, these starving children in Ethiopia right, right, right. and stuff like that. Flies you, on the face. You never saw, like, you never saw, like, uh, Johannesburg. Right? I never saw that. Like, maybe you did, okay? So I can only speak for myself, right? And the community that I came up in and the people I were around, right? Africa wasn't a conversation. We only talked about Africa as in a connection of slavery. That's it, right? African booty scratches. And, that, and, and listen, and, and yes, and look, look. Okay, so I remember there was some, uh, who said that? Oh, it was a brother I met here, and he was like, yeah, why, you know, black Americans, that's what they used to call me. Right. The guy that, um, remember the two guys I went to, right, I don't right, know right, one right. I went to talk to? Right. They hit me with that. And, uh, and uh, you know, they, you gotta understand, this is the same thing that we being said to us, yeah. you know, by whether we're Caucasians or, you know, Puerto Mexican, Ricans right. or Dominicans, right. you know, all of them really also mostly from Africa, right, right you know? Right, right. Sometimes as dark as us and still making statements the same way that unfortunately some of us have made statements like that to other Africans uh, that were also in the diaspora in America. So I, I say media is one of the big reasons that we think that we are not because, you know, again, all we see is the negativity. We don't we never show anything where we can place ourselves to say, oh, that's, you know, now, of course, is a little bit different. But you got to realize that the marketing and the programming happening in the last, what, four to five years and the popularity of Afrobeats. Right, right. right? You know what I'm saying? Is, is, you know, you're talking about 30, 40 years of the opposite. Right. So I would say media. Like right now, we do go through racist situations. 2030, but far as that mindset that connects us with that transatlantic slave trade, there's a disconnect, right? So I think because it's 4th of July, uh, barbecue, french fries, block parties, and you know, sweet 16s, and the different things that we uh, gravitate to in this current society, we, we, there's a definitely a disconnect with what goes on on the continent of Africa. 
like growing up, I remember watching Nelson Mandela and, and, and the whole thing with apartheid. I, I remember asking, what's apartheid? Apartheid really began in 1948, but separating black Africans from the white minority had long been a policy aim. Laws made white people officially superior, and the large black majority faced discrimination in every aspect of their lives. Well, they did this, well, that's, what, that's what they got going on over there in Africa, but they never said, that it was never really connected to us in reference to us as a people, that, you know, apartheid was taking place in South Africa up until, you know, we started making music. Once we started making music, you know, with, the, um, you know, that's the sonic. African and Bada and different artists started making music about that whole situation. That's when it became something. So you know, I say, I say, I say, I think the the, the disconnect is because of lack of information. They don't talk about Mansa Musa. They don't talk about the voyages before Christopher Columbus. Mansa Khan Khan Musa sailed over to the shores of America in search of his half brother Abubakari, who was Mandingo. A member of any of various peoples inhabiting a large area of the upper Niger River Valley of Western Africa. We don't have a, a, a Christopher Columbus, you know what I mean? Like there's a Christopher Columbus holiday, but we don't have a Mansa Musa day. We don't have a, um, um, the different things that say, okay, you know, when you graduate from college, you know, go back to this country because you're, sp you're, you're, you're French speaking, because you're from Haiti, then you should go back to, you should go to Benin or Senegal, other French-speaking countries. I think that's a reason because of the disconnect. And that disconnect is so in, in, entrenched within the DNA and in the offsprings, you can't really look at the Africans over there, which is the same thing as you, and then say like, you know, um, I'm African. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna say, no, I'm American, or I'm black. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, which is also another form of a disconnect. Right, and and also, I'm glad you brought that up because another thing is that there was such a fight to be American. You get what I'm talking about? So there was like this, what, 100 year fight? You know, from like the late 30s, right? All the way up into the 2000s, even to now, to actually be accepted as an American. So you have a person like Smokey Robinson, right? Okay. That has the poem, uh, okay, Black yeah, American, the Black American poem. I love being black. I love being called black. I love being an American. I love being a black American. Right. And you know, with him saying that he's not African, that he's a black American, so on and so forth. So, and, and, and if you listen to his mindset in the poetry, you know, he's talking about all they fought for, you know, so on, you know, the, the civil rights movement, you know, so I, I think there's this, this acceptance, this wanting to be accepted as American. So you have a, you have some people that say, look, I don't want to be recognized as an African American. I don't want to be recognized as a Black American. I want to just be recognized as an American. So in order for you to do that, you have to conform. You know, so that's what he was say, talking about the July Fourths, the uh, you know the McDonald's and the you know talking about the barbecues and or everything that you know. So they, it was like you 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 want to do the things that Americans do. Baseball, right? Because you know, matter of fact, we used to, we were playing baseball when I was young, right. and my friends and I, you know, at one point were like, "Yo, why did we play baseball? Because it was boring, you know." So it was it was a really boring sport, but we played it because that's what American children do. So there was a lot of us trying to conform this to to, to actually try to be regular, and then. Um, a good understanding of that for people that are, you know, Africans in the diaspora, uh, you know, or on the continent that, you know, wonder why there's this disconnect, as Denta was saying, there's a, a, a movie called, a study called The Doll Test. The Doll Test. The Doll Test. Incredible. Yeah, because it was done in 68, 40 years later in 2008, it had the exact same results, and basically it was... They were testing these children, putting white dolls in front of them and black dolls in front of them. Which doll is the black doll? And which one is the white doll? Which doll is the pretty doll? Which doll is the nice doll? Which doll is the bad doll? 
Which doll is the nice doll? And which doll is the bad doll? And, what, and why is that doll pretty? Because she's white and he has two eyes. Which doll is the ugly doll? Why is that doll ugly? Because he, because he's black. Which doll looks most like you? Like me? Yeah, which one looks like you? And that one. And then saying which doll is the good doll, which doll is the ba the bad doll. So in in one clip is it's crazy, you know. And maybe we'll clip it into this, right? In one clip, the girl, um, they put the the white doll in front of the girl. They said, which doll is the no? They said, which doll is the good doll, the black or the white doll? She picks the white doll as the good doll. And she said, which doll is you? And when she said which doll is you, she was stuck. So this is so that's leading to something built into our subconscious and, and, it, and it's important for people to understand what the mental position is of a lot of Africans in America that may not understand, you know, or may not, you know, see that connection, you know, because of those different programmings and the different things that we would, uh, that we would mention.